Bobby Broyles and Tim McDonald here. Should be a really interesting matchup. Buckle up. If you're not watching, you got some problems. Believe it or not, we've reached the season finale of This Week in CA Football, powered by Geico. I'm Bobby Broyles, alongside my partner, Tim McDonald. Tim, you and I have already looked back to what was a memorable trip to Frisco with the result all of us wanted as JMU was crowned 2016 NCAA FCS National Champions, putting CA football back on top. Right where it belongs. And it's great and even strange feeling at the end of Saturday's game, whether you are a JMU fan, whether you're an FCS fan, or just a, a follower of CA football, simply because to me it was clear that the best team and the best program mm -hmm. in 2016 this fall won the national championship. From start to finish, it was just... a bizarre because it just looked like the Dukes were always in control of that game yep. uh, even though the score you know it was close they just looked like they dictated the flow and the it's just that's not always the case in championship mm -hmm. games and I think that just speaks volumes to how good JMU was prepared and, and just ready to get the job done I think in the bigger picture you stand back and think about all the previous great CA teams Delaware from 2003 Richmond in 2008 yep. I mean all the it's the bodies of work of all these great CA teams in the past it's easy to sit here right now and look at JMU and say the Dukes are pretty close to, to those type of caliber teams. Yes. JMU went 14 and 0 this season, perfect versus FCS competition, undefeated in league play. I mean that that's hard enough, mm -hmm. and continued to get stronger year as the year went on. Especially, I mean, we're going to talk about it too. But just once they beat North Dakota State too, yeah. there was almost no doubt in a mm -hmm. lot of fans' minds and a lot of these the way they played in in their minds. CA football now has had five teams win a national championship since 2003, and the Dukes are now the only team in league history to own multiple FCS national championships. I thought it set the tone right out of the gates versus Youngstown State on Saturday. Jonathan Klusterman, what a postseason, phenomenal starts oh, yeah. to scoring. A touchdown pass from Brian Shore, Rashard Davis also had a touchdown catch. That was just over five minutes in. Obviously, the blocked punt, field position also helped. Mm -hmm. The next punt was shanked, so that it had to be in the puncher's mind. 21-7 to at half, and Khalid Abdullah had a playoff high, 26 carries for 101 yards and two touchdowns. Brian Shore in the offense really didn't need to keep the pressure up for the first time really all season, it seems. Yeah. Shore only had 112 yards and seven completions. If you told me that at the beginning of the game, I said, Jamie, you would have been in trouble, but it didn't matter. No. The, the defense did the job, and then some held the Penguins to 21 total rushing yards on 31 attempts, less than a yard per carry for Youngstown mm. State. Shut down a dangerous Jody Webb, who had over 600 yards in the playoffs in all, and forced quarterback Hunter Wells to attempt 47 passes, which... If you ask any Youngstown State fan, that's extremely uncharacteristic for the Penguins and what they like to do. Abdullah finished the season with an FCS high and new program record, 1,809 yards on the ground and 22 rushing scores. Both single season school records and named the most outstanding player of the game. Only fitting mm -hmm. for him to go out like that. And to do this in year one under Mike Houston is remarkable. Don't forget, let's look ahead just a tiny bit. I'll, yeah. I'll pump the brakes here a little <laughs> bit. Brian Shore, Raven Green, Cardin Johnson, Dimitri Hall. I can keep on going. We mm -hmm. can keep on listing players. There's a lot of key guys back in 2017 that makes things, I think, much better in CAA football because mm -hmm. now you have every team understanding even better now what it takes or what it could take to yes. potentially get to this point in the season and hoist the trophy when it's all said and done. As one season ends, another one has already begun here, Tim, with Jamie winning the national championship and the year officially coming to a close. Give us some keys you'll look back on across all of CA football from 2016. It'll be talked about for a long time, especially among JMU fans. Yes. You know, whether it's in Harrisonburg, whether across Virginia, it, it, it's you got to start first and foremost with the road that JMU took to Frisco, beating really good and really quality teams in conference play. That was at home mm -hmm. and on the road as well. Dominating both sides of the ball in the playoffs, especially defense. And, and finally, ending the streak in Fargo against North Dakota State. How do you not start there if you're looking back to 2016? That's the headliner to me, but taking the fact that State Football had four playoff teams yet again, the other three outside of the Dukes winning a playoff game as well. So the Spiders won a playoff game, Villanova won a playoff game, and New Hampshire won a playoff game. Yep. All of them, trust me when I say this, and you know this too, are gonna have something to say yes. next season. Richmond advanced to the quarters with how many injuries? Did we? A, I mean, we lost lot. track. A, a yeah. handful of injuries, not even the starting quarterback. Should get Kyle Alletta back. He's back as well in 2017, among many other players on both sides of the ball. Nova and New Hampshire both had really underrated defenses, but also were incredibly young on defense. And both, oh, by the way, also bring back starting quarterbacks, so they'll have something to say as well. And, of course, we said goodbye to Andy Talley and the greater impact he's had and also probably mm -hmm. will continue to have on this conference and Villanova football moving forward. They're going to get a new leader. We'll get into that in a minute, but again, he will be missed. The conference finished with four ranked teams, 24-7 and record versus FCS foes in non-conference play, and 27 wins in non-conference overall, both of which, by the way, are the best in FCS football. 
you know, I can't wrap up the season finale without taking a glimpse into next season. And one would have to think that the main headline going into 2017 will be if the Jamie Dukes can repeat just not as just conference champions, but as national champions. We also already know that we have quite a few coaching changes to look forward to next year. I knew you were going to start with that. But, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's fair. you got to start that because the amount of pieces that JMU has back, I mean, the coaching staff is intact right now. The mm -hmm. players are back, especially Brian Shore back at quarterback. I'm not sure, you know, I'm sure anyone, uh, any player will tell you right now certain things throughout the course of a season have to work out and work out in the right direction, especially if you're going to win a national championship. You talk about scheduling, you talk about conference opponents, you talk about yep. road games, you talk about injuries. We can go on and on and on and much more. But for the time being, for me, you know, I'm going to take kind of the middle road right now and say it's too early to talk larger predict predictions about back-to-back -back titles. Can JMU go back to Frisco? Mm -hmm. All that talk. And I'm sure JMU players and fans are happy that I'm not getting into that. But you have yes. to believe that right now there's no doubt that JMU is going to headline all the talk heading into a new season, especially mm -hmm. so many key pieces back, but also just the way that they won. I think it, it, mm -hmm. I would like for JMU fans to really enjoy this one for a while because yep. before you know it, the season's going to be here. But again, you have to believe that JMU is going to be the headliner. And of course, like you said, there's been mm -hmm. already some coaching changes. Danny Rocco is now the leader of the Blue Hens in Newark. Of course, former Spider assistant Russ Huseman also comes back. He mm -hmm. takes over at Richmond, so a little bit of a flip-flop. Very, very intriguing storyline already. Looking forward to both of those programs. Not only, yeah. I mean, we know they're going to play each other, so that, yeah. that alone That'll is going to be interesting to see yes. very early. Especially, are they going to change? Are the offenses, are things, it, that already is kind of exciting to think mm -hmm. about. Elon welcomed Kurt Signetti as its new head coach. He comes over from Division II. Indiana University of Pennsylvania has previous stops as a recruiting coordinator at Alabama, so he's yeah, pretty, pretty quality. Yeah. An uh, assistant coach as well at NC State and Pitt in past seasons and 53 wins in six years at IUP and also had some really, really good, impressive offensive numbers there. So you kind of get an early idea of what he wants to do at Elon. And with those three changes, we talked earlier about Villanova, but Mark Verane is taking over for Tally at Villanova, a move we'd already known, just going to kind of slowly get into place now as the new year rolls around. And just uh, if you think about it, 2017 for me, it just went up a few more levels with the amount of mm -hmm. quality and respected coaches in this conference. It's only going to make things for everyone that much better. Well, throughout the offseason, stay tuned to CAFootball.com for all the latest news and content. And I know, Tim, as you said many times, our social media platforms will be busy, too, with National Signing Day, the NFL Draft, and Spring Ball all, is coming up. All coming up around the corner. I know it'll be busy, but if you guys are online and looking around, yeah, don't worry. They'll be, we'll, be, we'll be following and we'll be providing plenty of content throughout the offseason. Well, with that, we would like to thank everyone behind the scenes that helps this show. Director of Video Services, Mike Winley, who also did a great job once again with our on-campus features this year. Also have to thank from our staff, Jamie Corrin, with her assistance with social media, our Associate Commissioner for Football, Brian Gordon, Rob Washburn, Football Media Relations, and of course, the Commissioner, Commission. Joey D, Joe D'Antonio. From all of us at the CAA, thank you for watching all season long, and we'll see you soon.